There's sort of a headline feature in, um, in Mathematica 8, um, which uh, you might be able to guess something about what it is um, from, uh, if you can see it, there's a little plus sign there on the input line here. So if I press that little plus sign, you'll see, and this is not quite the final design for this. Um, it'll change a little bit before Mathematica 8 is released. Um, you'll see this pull down, which gives you a variety of options for ways that you can enter input to Mathematica. Normally, when you talk to Mathematica, you use the Mathematica language to communicate with Mathematica. Um, but now there's a new possibility, which is revealed here, which is you can use free form input um, to communicate with Mathematica. How does this work? Well, it's based on the huge tower of technology that we've built in Wolfram Alpha. Um, I, as uh, I'm sure you've all seen Wolfram Alpha, and uh, I won't talk in great detail about Wolfram Alpha uh, right now, um, in the 18 months or so since Wolfram Alpha came out, uh, it's, uh, we've been sort of increasing its uh, store of computable knowledge, roughly doubled um, the, the amount of uh, knowledge, the number of domains and so on that it covers um, in the last uh, 18 months. Um, it's been, been growing very rapidly. It's also a, a terrific example of uh, software development in Mathematica. Wolfram Alpha is now about 10 million lines of Mathematica code running on uh, a very large number of servers um, that uh, supply this sort of production website. One of the things that Wolfram Alpha does, in addition to having all of this curated data, all of these methods and models and algorithms and, and computation that can be done on the basis of that data, all these ways of presenting data, another important thing that Wolfram Alpha does is it understands free form linguistics. It understands natural language queries. So we can make use of that in Mathematica now. And all you do is type an equal sign at the beginning of the line. You can also get it from that pull down. And now you can start typing uh, sort of funny stuff into Mathematica, like you could type uh, 2 plus 2 like this, um, and the answer, needless to say, is 4. Or you could say, you know, what is the integral of x sine squared x? That looks terrible, but, but um, uh, you know, it's horrible non-Mathematica syntax. But look at that. Um, from, uh, by using Wolfram Alpha technology, um, we're able to, uh, to figure out that that kind of piece of cruddy, free-form linguistic sort of natural language input is equivalent to this piece of precise Mathematica, and then we're able to evaluate that in, in Mathematica. By the way, I should show you um, here, look at this plus sign here. Um, what, what will happen normally is that Mathematica will try and interpret, try and get sort of the, the best first interpretation of the input that you gave. If you press that plus sign, you'll get kind of the full Wolfram Alpha experience within Mathematica. So here, um, we're getting um, all of this stuff. And so, for example, uh, Wolfram Alpha does a good job as, as, you know, as Calculation Center did millions of years ago of figuring out um, uh, sort of automatically the plot ranges for, for plots and so on. Um, and uh, uh, we, can take, we can take, for example, one of these alternative uh, interpretations, alternative things that Wolfram Alpha would do, and we can say, okay, let's pick that one there. And now let's, uh, let's evaluate this, this Wolfram Alpha um, uh, freeform linguistic input again, and now we'll get this, uh, now the interpretation will be taken to be this plot here, and we'll get the plot. And so we could, we could just, if we click that, that piece there, then we'll just get that particular plot. Um, so, in a sense, what's happened here, one of the things that was very interesting in thinking about how to sort of merge the capabilities of Wolfram Alpha and Mathematica was what to do with the fact that in Mathematica we're used to having one input, one output. In Wolfram Alpha we're used to having one input, lots of different outputs. How do we deal with that? And uh, what we realized is that uh, there's, when there is sort of a primary output, we can just give that primary output and interpret it directly within Mathematica. That's what happened there. So, for example, I type in something like, you know, uncles, uncles, uncle. Um, that's something which, uh, uh, which Wolfram Alpha can perfectly well deal with and generates all sorts of output. That doesn't particularly mean anything to Mathematica right now. Um, and what it produces in Mathematica is what we, at least internally, call an alpha blob, um, which is just this thing that you can then, well, you can then do things with it. You can pick out that graphic. You can do things with the graphic and so on. But this is sort of an, an object that, uh, uh, is, um, is a representation of sort of uh, Wolfram Alpha output that is not 
um, directly uh, obtainable by a simple mathematical piece of mathematical input. Well, there's all, there's all sorts of things you can do here. So for instance, a single equal sign gives you this kind of access to Wolfram Alpha capabilities um, in such a way that you get back a uh, kind of um, uh, standard Mathematica, a standard piece of Mathematica output like this, for instance. Uh, and, I, and I might say that the thing that I consider most significant about what we're doing here with, uh, with integrating Wolfram Alpha freeform linguistic input into Mathematica is if one was ever worried about any kind of learning curve associated with getting started with Mathematica, that just got smashed. Because what, what happens here is that just from sort of the description of some kind of problem, you can expect to type that in and have a piece of Mathematica input automatically generated. A single equal sign uh, does this thing that I just showed. A double equal sign will give you sort of the full Wolfram Alpha experience um, inside Mathematica. So if I type a word in there, I'll get this full piece of Wolfram Alpha um, output uh, rendered in, in um, with all sorts of funky things here, um, uh, rendered in Mathematica. And you know, I could, if I wanted to, I can deal with this. Um, uh, uh, well, I, c I can do all sorts of things there. I'll show you a few other things uh, about integration of freeform linguistics into, into Mathematica. So I showed you single equals, uh, which generates this sort of single uh, freeform linguistic input, double equals, which generates sort of the full Wolfram Alpha query experience. There's one more case, which is control equals. And that's useful if you're, if you're just going ahead and typing something in and you want to type things in, type in a piece of input in kind of a sloppy way, you can get one of these inline freeform uh, input uh, things here. And so let's say I just type, you know, x squared log, you know, log log x or something. Um, now, as soon as I hit uh, return, um, that will get interpreted as uh, a piece of Mathematica input, and I can just go on typing here, you know, comma x, comma one, comma six, or something, um, and there I get the result. And now, you know, these little arrows here, I can decide to um, uh, to pick uh, just that. Um, I can I can have that be uh, what my input looks like. I can also set it up. Uh, for example, if I say, okay, I just want to commit to uh, that Mathematica form, I just click on that, and the uh, 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 freeform input assistant goes away. That's pretty neat functionality, don't you think? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so, by the way, I might mention, just, just to be aware of some of the, some of the issues here, um, there are all sorts of tricky things that happen. Like, for example, how do we handle the um, disambiguation of things. So, so here I'm doing something, this is something that's really useful actually. We can type in, for example, particularly when we're using data kinds of things, we can just type names of things and through this freeform linguistic input mechanism um, we get uh, uh, the disambiguation mechanisms and we get to know how we would type in you know, the city of Springfield or something. Well, in Wolfram Alpha we know that the city of Springfield, there are many possible Springfields and uh, Wolfram Alpha is clever enough to pick the one that you're likely to mean based on GOIP information and based on knowledge that it has of all these cities. Um, but I could want to use a different Springfield here. If I do that, um, then th this is sort of the mechanism. If I open up the plus sign thing, if I, if I expose this, then I can now say, okay, let me use the, the different Springfield that I get by taking a different branch in the Wolfram Alpha assuming. So that's a, that's a place where you make use of, uh, of those kinds of capabilities. It's also kind of nice to have uh, the Wolfram Alpha input really directly in Mathematica where you're able to you know, pick up, um, you know, if you pick up one of these graphs, one of these things here, let's do that one for instance, um, you know, we're able to just uh, go ahead and manipulate it just like any other um, piece of uh, graphics for example. Actually, yeah, let me, um, and you know, I can go and resize it, I can copy paste it into something else, you know, do all the usual stuff. Um, and now, uh, actually, another thing that's, that's important about, um, about this, uh, this output here, let's, let's use the double equals sign. Um, you know, we're used to, in, in Wolfram Alpha, we typically just get output on the web. Um, here, let's say we ask about a spiky here. Um, now, if it's within Mathematica, um, this is being rendered inside a Mathematica notebook, so we can just pick up the output here, and it's no longer a piece of dead web output, it's a, a piece of live Mathematica output. Um, okay, so let's go on. So, so another, another question is, um, when we think about unifying what happens with Mathematica and what happens with Wolfram Alpha, 
Um, an area that we've been really interested in is to be able to do programming um, using free-form linguistic input. So uh, we just sort of started experimenting with this, and one of the things that will happen when version 8 comes out is that because all this free-form linguistics is a server-based thing, we're able to update it continuously, and we'll update it based on uh, studying the statistics of how people actually use it. Um, but we're still, uh, you know, in, we're, we're, we're releasing quite a few things at the beginning. So, so I can say something like plot sine x, I get a nice plot like that. I can say something like plot sine x in red with short dashing. So now it's basically automatically synthesized this piece of Mathematica input here um, to, generate, um, uh, to generate that output. Um, and now I can go and uh, actually start doing things the, the way this works. Um, it's able to pick up pieces of the notebook um, that uh, I have here. And so if I say set line thickness 3, it will go and know that that's supposed to be referring to the, the, uh, the last line, um, and it will then sort of do this, uh, do this operation. Um, so for example, I could maybe say, you know, change background color to, uh, I don't know, cobalt blue. There you go. And so it knew, it, it figured out what cobalt blue was using Wolfram Alpha knowledge. Now if I don't like this I can say invert colors and now again at each step it's going to pick up, um, it's going to know enough about the environment that it's in to be able to sort of create these programs in that way. And maybe I can go ahead here and I can say let me do a piece of image processing on this, let me say blur that. That's the result. So by, by the way what's happening here from a technical point of view I should explain that what's happening here is that the, the actual computation, no, no bitmaps were sent over to the Wolfram Alpha server when this was being done. What was happening was that the piece of program code, the blur operation, was being sent back. The, the Wolfram Alpha server had to know something about uh, what that previous graphic was in order to have an idea of what kind of code to generate. But once it knew that, it sent just the code back to the, the Mathematica client, and inside the local Mathematica, the blur operation was done. So, you know, we can do all kinds of things like this. We can say, draw eight red circles. And now it will figure out some reasonable way to do that. It can say something like draw a slider, and it'll uh, be able to figure out things about creating an interface for us, show a pull-down menu. Um, so you get the idea that you might be able to start creating complete Mathematica, interactive Mathematica programs just by doing free-form linguistics. Let's try something where we're really using non-trivial data. Uh, we, we, the variables that you create in a Mathematica session are actually accessible to the free-form linguistic system. Let's say, for example, I, I pick up the, uh, using from example data, um, I pick up the text of uh, Darwin's Origin of Species. Well, now let's say I want to know how long the text is there, and I remember the C command Stirlen. So I can say, you know, Stirlen of text here, and now it'll tell me that, that's, that the mathematical equivalent of that is string length of text, and there's the result. Or I can say, uh, you know, count occurrences of Beagle in text. Wow, that's surprisingly small. Okay, so the, there are 13,000 these, so that's, that's more, more convenient. Yeah, that's right, I should, that's right, I, that's the thing, yes, selection. Okay, 351 of those at least. I could say take first 60 characters. Um, okay, there we go. Oh, we could say, actually, let's, um, we could say something like speak, uh, speak. That's, that's sort of a mixed. Um, Introduction, when on board HMS. Beagle as natural as etc etc etc. So what's interesting about all of this is uh, it provides us sort of a, a I think it's a really kind of paradigm changing thing that's happening here because you know in the past there's been this notion of are you a programmer or are you not a programmer? That's the kind of the idea that uh, if you're a programmer you write in a computer language and you tell the computer what to do. If you're not a programmer then you're out of luck at that level. Here we've got something that sort of interpolates between those two things. You're able to use free-form linguistics, uh, just natural language, to tell the computer what to do, and it's generating actual specific pieces of symbolic Mathematica code that allow you to precisely do those operations, and which you can then put together to build up bigger and bigger programs. So I think there's a pretty, pretty exciting uh, point in sort of the history of, of, uh, of programming.